ஹலோ எவ்ரி பான் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு மை சேனல் கியான் சம்பதா இன் அவர் ப்ரீவியஸ் கிளாஸ் வேர் வி ஸ்டார்டட் அ நியூ கன்செப்ட் ஆஃப் மேக்னட்டிக் ரெசனன்ஸ் வி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் அபவுட் த இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் த பேசிக் ஒர்க்கிங் பிரின்சிபிள் த ரெசனன்ஸ் கண்டிஷன் ஆஃப் பேராமேக்னட்டிக் ரெசனன்ஸ் ஸோ இன் அவர் டுடேஸ் கிளாஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு கண்டினியூ வித் the same concept so if you have not gone through the previous class first go through it because some of the equations which we have noted down in the last class will be used in today's class while deriving the paramagnetic resonance principle so let us start our today's class on the derivation of the principle based on equations of motion that is as such we know if omega is equals to omega l then resonance takes place let us derive it using some standard equations of motion for that let us consider mu to be the dipole moment of an ion and g be the angular momentum corresponding to it so one thing i want to tell here is whenever i am using the bold letters like mu and g it is understood that it is a vector quantity because if you observe the previous images also mu is having its own direction as well as magnitude so it is acting as a vector similarly the angular momentum so every letter which is bold it means it is a vector quantity so as we know as such the electron is going to rotate with respect to its own axis that is it is having its own spin but when magnetic field is applied we can observe that magnetic moment due to the spin of electron is going to start precessing here we have considered h plus which is something like a proton and the direction will be opposite if you consider electron because of its negative charge both are possible based on which we are having different types of magnetic resonance which we will study in our coming classes then we have the relation between mu and g that is magnetic dipole moment and the angular momentum as mu is equals to ge by 2 mc into vector g so the similar equation we have seen when we were looking after the ferromagnetic concept where we defined the gyromagnetic ratio so gyromagnetic ratio is nothing but the ratio of magnetic moment to the angular momentum so we can say that mu by g is equals to ge by 2 mc and this ge by 2 mc is nothing but gamma which is gyromagnetic ratio so let us call it as equation number 2 where your g is generalized splitting factor means you can even consider a free ion or a bounded ion then the corresponding equations of motion can be written as dg by dt is equals to ge by 2 mc into g cross h because we know when we apply the magnetic field the magnetic moment is going to precess so with respect to time its corresponding angular momentum magnetic moment is also going to be changing so in the same manner we can write it in terms of magnetic moment because from equation number 2 we have seen mu and g are related to each other so another equation of motion in terms of dipole moment will be d mu by dt is equals to g by 2 mc into mu cross h and this holds good for atomic systems it is verified also so here you can observe the direction and how we can observe the rate of change of any factor like we have considered here as m m is nothing but magnetization it is nothing but the resultant magnetic moment so it is something like a circle and the velocity will be given as the tangent at that point in the same manner here the magnetic moment is pointing at this point of the precession and the tangent will give you the rate of change of magnetization or magnetic moment so here visualization becomes more easy so if static field is applied along z direction as we have considered here then 
the same equation equation number 4 can be written in terms of the components that is mu x mu y mu z so it is similar to your polar coordinate system equations where you define x y z in terms of r theta phi here we are just expressing it in terms of theta omega l into t so mu x will be equal to mu sin theta cos omega l into t where omega l is larmer frequency mu y is mu sin theta sin omega l into t mu z is a constant which is equals to mu cos theta because here we have applied the magnetic field along z direction so along z direction moment remains constant so let us call this set of equation as 5 then we have defined here omega l omega l is nothing but the larmer frequency which can be given as minus gamma h where your gamma is nothing but ge by 2 mc which you can observe from equation number 2 which is the gyromagnetic ratio so according to this equation we can say that mu and g are going to precise about the magnetic field h at larmer frequency omega l so this is how we interpret equation number 6 so here we can observe that the magnetic moment or the dipole is going to make an angle theta with respect to the magnetic field direction which is taken to be equal to h so this angle is theta and also magnetic moment along z direction is constant thus using quantum mechanics we can see that mu z is equals to ms into h cross where ms is nothing but the magnetic quantum number which is included in equation number 7 so it is similar to the eigenvalue of z component of angular momentum there generally you write jz is equals to mh cross in the same manner as angular momentum defined as vector g is related to magnetic moment vector mu we can write mu z that is z component of magnetic moment equal to ms into h cross so till here we discussed about the effect of static magnetic field and if the resonance has to take place then in addition to the static field we need the alternating field also so let us apply an alternating magnetic field because electromagnetic field is having the magnetic component also so we can just apply alternating magnetic field to h1 cos omega t along the perpendicular direction of h so if h is along z direction then the alternating field will be applied along x or y direction so here let us apply it along x direction itself so here in this diagram we can observe that electron is spinning the magnetic moment is going to precise with respect to the direction of magnetic field which is applied along z direction with the larmer frequency and to the system we are going to apply an alternating field with frequency omega perpendicular to applied static field so this is along z direction and this is along x direction which is having the amount 2 h1 cos omega t so here it is h prime we have taken as h1 so this is the strength this is relating to the phase or the time dependence then alternating means the directions have to alter so this may be considered as made up of two circularly polarized field one which is rotating in clockwise direction and another which is rotating in counterclockwise direction and we can define these fields with respect to their components so the field which is rotating clockwise the x component can be written as h1 cos omega t hy will be equal to h1 sin omega t and hz will be equal to 0 because it is perpendicular to z direction so both are independent of each other then moving to the counterclockwise direction we can say that hx is equals to h1 cos omega t so when you add up you get 2 h1 cos omega t itself that is 
the alternating field which is applied along x direction and direction changes means we know cos theta is equals to cos of minus theta so it is alternating field itself then hy component will be minus h1 sin omega into t so when you add this up resultant is going to vanish and same hz will be equal to 0 so let the equation set be equation number 8 so for resonance if omega is equals to omega l in that case mu and h1 will rotate in synchronism which means the torque acting on the system which is given as mu cross h1 will be equal to constant therefore in time mu is going to turn either towards h or away from h so this mu can move towards h or away from h so when mu will turn towards h we say energy is emitted whereas if the vector mu is turning away from h we can say that energy will be absorbed so again there will be a net absorption because of difference in the level population so here we can observe that rf pulse which is like a alternating field is applied which makes the spin to move in phase or out of phase so in phase with respect to larmer frequency so due to this external alternating field there will be creation of difference in the level population due to which we will again observe the net absorption and here generally we use the counterclockwise rotation of the field that is the clockwise rotating polarized field will act as a frequency far from the larmer frequency so chances of resonance becomes less and thus the effect of clockwise rotating field can be neglected so our main concentration when we are considering the resonance phenomena will be with respect to counterclockwise rotating polarized field so here i told you that the applied alternating field should be perpendicular to the static field so why it is actually necessary to have alternating field perpendicular to the static one is the question if they are not perpendicular to each other what may happen so as such in short i can say that if both are not perpendicular then resonance is not so pronounced or in another words i can say when both are perpendicular to each other in that case energy absorption will be maximum which is the criteria for resonance to take place so in treating this principle quantitatively that is till now we consider the single moment mu but if you consider a paramagnetic material there are a number of magnetic moments so for the quantitative study we need to sum up the dipole moments vectorially because all these are having its own direction so in that case the equation of motion which is given with respect to magnetic moment mu in case of equation number 4 can be written as dm by dt is equals to gamma m cross h gamma is nothing but g by 2mc that is gyromagnetic ratio and m is nothing but the summation over mu that is magnetization which is defined as dipole moment per unit volume so you can consider magnetization is nothing but sum of magnetic moments corresponding to certain unit volume so now whole system is considered so if you consider equation number 9 again it can be written in terms of components and we are going to neglect the clockwise rotation part of h1 and only counterclockwise part is going to be considered so dmx by dt can be written as gamma myh minus mz h1 sin omega t similarly dmy by dt and dmz by dt so for simplicity to remember these set of equations we can just say the constant gyromagnetic ratio gamma is taken outside the bracket then if you are having the rate of change of x component of magnetization then the next component will be with respect to y 
so m y then the z component should be there so z component means we are applying the field along z direction that is static field h then minus now z component of magnetization with y component of alternating field so m z and y component of magnetic field just h1 sin omega t similarly dmy by dt gamma as it is after my we will be having mz that is z comes after y then x component of field that is h1 cos omega t minus x component magnetization mx and z component of field that is h coming to dmz by dt gamma as it is we need to consider mx then field associated with y direction minus my with field associated with x direction so in this manner you can remember the set of equation 10 only cyclic nature is to be remembered so generally whenever we are having these components we make use of complex terms so again here also using complex magnetizations which are defined as m plus and m minus so m plus minus will be equal to mx plus or minus imy so these are set of equation 11 it is similar to that of your angular momentum or ladder operator where you define l plus as lx plus ily and l minus as lx minus ily in the same manner we are writing here with respect to magnetization clearly we can observe that m plus and minus are having mx and my term means these set of equations also should follow the same set of equations of motion that is shown in equation number 10 so what we will do for that we need to differentiate equation 11 that is dm plus by dt which will be equal to dmx by dt plus i dmy by dt so we are having the values of dmx by dt and dmy by dt so if you substitute the values from equation number 10 in the differential equation of equation number 11 we can find out that the set of equations which will follow the differential equations will be something like this similarly you need to do it for m minus also and finally dmz by dt it will remain with respect to m plus as well as m minus so just substitute and find out this solution which gives you set of equation number 12 so clearly you can observe in dm plus by dt you are having first negative sign then m plus term then mz with alternating field with exponential of i omega t whereas for m minus first term is positive with m minus so plus minus here minus plus and here also plus and here it is minus i gamma as it is mz as it is h1 also as it is but exponential term which is with respect to phase is having the negative sign so here it is something like the effect of m plus as well as m minus so the solution can be written as m plus minus is equals to gamma h1 mz exponential term divided by gamma h plus omega which we consider as equation number 13 and also the directions can be visualized in this diagram which are with respect to the equations of motion and the z component if you consider then we have already seen magnetic field is applied along z direction which means magnetic moment mu z is equals to constant which we have taken as ms into h cross so rate of change of mz will be equal to 0 thus mz which is the magnetization along z axis is constant so another factor which we can define is tan theta which is given as the magnitude of ratio of complex magnetization to z component of magnetization where theta is the angle between magnetization and the z direction that is applied static field so this is angle theta so if you substitute the values of m plus minus then we can observe that mz is going to cancel out 
leaving us with gamma h1 divided by gamma h plus omega. So here we can observe both the fields are involved and if you divide it by gamma we get equation number 14 where theta is equals to tan inverse of h1 divided by h plus omega by gamma. So based on equation number 14 we can define certain cases where we can explain about the resonance condition. So first let us consider if omega is equals to omega l and we know that Larmor frequency omega l can be given as minus gamma h. So when that is the case we say resonance is taking place which means maximum absorption of energy. So according to the previous equation that is tan theta is equals to h1 divided by h plus omega by gamma if you substitute omega is equals to omega l then we can observe that here we are having the term equal to minus gamma h gamma gamma will get cancelled out and we are remaining with minus h. So in the denominator we can say h minus h will be equal to 0 and tan theta will be equal to infinity which means theta which is the angle between the magnetization and z axis will be equal to pi by 2 that is 90 degree. So what we say when that angle is equals to 90 degree resonance is going to take place which means energy absorption is maximum. But as such if you think on your own then if tan theta is equals to infinity it means that m plus minus by mz will be equal to infinity which implies m plus minus is tending to infinity. So the complex magnetization whichever is the combination of x component of magnetization and y component of magnetization it is diverging which is not true. Again if you consider the susceptibility corresponding to it susceptibility chi will be nothing but m plus minus divided by h1. So again m plus minus is tending to infinity means chi also tends to infinity at Larmor frequency omega l but again it is not true. So the limitation of whatever derivation we have done here is the same thing magnetization or susceptibility can't diverge for a given system. So for this we need to add some correction factors which we will study in our coming classes when we study about the line width. So as such magnitude of complex magnetization depends on the amplitude of h1 which we can observe here clearly that is it mainly depends on the power of alternating radiation. So this is the condition for resonance but if let us say omega is not equal to omega l still we say there may be low energy absorption or there are chances that absorption won't take place. So these are the two cases which can be explained with respect to the previous theory. Then coming to some of the important points to be remembered based on the history or the working. So for the first time paramagnetic resonance was observed by Y. Zawoski, Kamarau and David Halliday. So when we substitute the numerical values in our equation number 1 we can get the resonance condition with respect to frequency nu is equals to 1.401 g into h where nu will be in mega cycles and h will be in oestids. So this frequency is depending on the energy difference again which we have already seen. Then the paramagnetic resonance experiments are especially carried out over a limited frequency range that is maintaining a fixed frequency and varying the static field. And generally that working frequency is in microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So these are some of the important points to remember. So next moving to the pros and cons of whatever we discussed till now mainly we can say 
the advantage in working at microwave frequency occurs because the difference in the level population is greater when larger field is applied. So energy absorption will be greater because of the difference in the level population which means resonance is more pronounced. So the greater intensity of the absorbed power can be observed. Then moving to the disadvantage is the complexity and the high cost of the apparatus. So clearly in this images we can observe how complex the whole apparatus is. So these are the basic details about magnetic resonance, basic principle of paramagnetic resonance especially for MSc physics students. So if you go in depth it is a very huge concept. So those who are interested can go through it but this is I hope a surfacial explanation which is up to the point of MSc level of mindset. Even though in two classes we have understood about the magnetic resonance introduction the basic principles of magnetic resonance that is the working principle as well as the resonance condition based on the Larmor frequency comparison and also we have derived the expression based on equations of motion with the limitations of it. So in our coming class we will be discussing about relaxation phenomena as well as how to overcome the limitation what we have observed in today's class. So this is it for today's class. So see you in our next class. Till then, stay tuned, study hard and thank you for watching.